Back on the Capitol Watch now, Governor Brad Little will deliver his third State of the State address at 1 o'clock, about a half hour from right now. We'll bring that to you live here on News Channel 7, our website, app, and YouTube page. We'll hear his priorities for the year ahead. Lawmakers have their own priorities. KTVB's Joe Paris caught up with House Minority Leader Ilana Rubel a short time ago to find out what's at the top of her list. Joe joins us now live with what she had to say. Hey, Joe. Hey, good afternoon, Doug. Yeah, lawmakers in Idaho actually have just gaveled in their session for the House and the Senate. So they're actually on the floor, really getting some of the procedural stuff started right now on the first day of the session. As Doug mentioned, though, a short time ago, I spoke with House Minority Leader Alana Rubel. She and I talked about what they're kind of expecting to hear from Governor Little, as well as what the energy is like there down at the Capitol. Of course, 2021, especially unique and maybe feels different than it has in years past. Here's Rubel. Well, joining us here on the News at Noon, Idaho House Minority Leader Alana Rubel. Representative Rubel, thank you so much for joining us. Coming up here at the top of the hour, we'll hear from Governor Little. Ahead of that, though, what are you and Idaho Democrats expecting to hear? Um, well, I know what I'm hoping to hear. Uh, I'm really hoping to hear that uh, we're going to be using some of this record surplus that they've been reporting um, to restore the deep cuts that vital services, including uh, education and, and health care just across the board. Um, so we'd really like to see, um, you know, we, we don't have a budget crisis right now. We have actually more money than we've ever had, but we do have a health care crisis and we have an infrastructure crisis uh, and we have an education crisis. We just saw that our, our go on rate has dropped to 38 percent, which is absolutely dismal. Uh, we're having serious educator retention and recruitment problems. Um, we need to bolster those vital needs that have been cut o over the past year. So uh, I guess that's the top line thing I'd like to hear. What kind of goals do you guys have going into the session? Things that you're really hoping the governor brings up that maybe he might not? Well, uh, you know, we certainly have a long agenda of things we would like to see happen. Um, for what we would like to see tax help to people who need it. <laughs> we would like to see property tax reductions. And, you know, if there's money for other forms of tax cuts, we would like to make sure that it actually goes to working people who need it as opposed to wealthy corporations and those at the top, which historically, you know, they've been the beneficiaries of all the tax cuts I've seen in my seven years here. Um, so uh, that's one of the things that you know, we want to make sure that the money's being directed to the people who need it most. Um, we want to see criminal justice reform. Uh, we want to see fixes to the foster care system. We want to see increases to daycare credits for families. Um, we want to see, uh, well, we have a lot of stuff. We want to see help for educators to be able to go into underserved areas, rural and, and other low income areas. Uh, so we have a long slate of legislation that we would like to bring. And I hope that we're going to see support for it across the aisle and from the governor's office. Of course, today is day one of the 2021 legislative session. Um, what's the energy like in the Capitol right now? Does it feel significantly different than in years past? Uh, you know, I think we have some security concerns and concerns about the general safety of the session, for sure. Uh, you know, we were already concerned about uh, the COVID situation, and you know, we're heading into session at a time of you know record explosive infections, um, where we're routinely seeing over 4,000 deaths a day at the national level. I think we're closing in on 400,000 deaths nationally, um, and our Idaho numbers are pretty terrible. Um, so we had concerns about that, and then layered onto that, we had all the security issues that hit at the U.S. Capitol, um, which were very reminiscent of what we saw here in August. Um, and here today, it's it's not as bad as I'd expected, but we are seeing some of that. And I just came from the rotunda where I heard they have giant wanted posters um, for a number of public servants that include their home addresses. Uh, apparently, I am one of those featured on one of these wanted posters. Um, so, you know, I'm really disappointed that uh, there still seems to be this appetite to harass and hound public servants at their homes and menace their families. Um, so, uh, <laughs> you know, still, still a lot of security concerns about, you know, protocols in terms of physical violence and general exposure to um, the virus. Well, thank you so much for joining us here on the news at noon. I know we'll be checking in with you and the Idaho Democrats after Governor Little's speech. But again, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Joe.